Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more attuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Commander's Quarters decks are built within a $25 budget. That's $25 for 100 cards. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new Golden Pig playmat on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased one. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's episode is a patron-selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons of this show vote on what commander they'd like to see on an upcoming episode. And the commander that received the most votes for this deck tech was Slimefoot the Stowaway. Slimefoot is a 2-3 fungus that costs 1 black green. It says whenever a sapperling you control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals 1 damage to each opponent and you gain 1 life. And then you can pay 4 generic mana to create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Slimefoot is a very straightforward commander with an aristocrat style deck. The more sapperlings that you get out and the more sapperlings that die, the more damage it's going to do to your opponents. So it's our strategy with this deck, but we want to get a ton of sapperlings onto the battlefield as quickly as we can. There actually aren't any creature cards that are technically sapperlings, but there are a lot of funguses that create sapperlings and other instants and sorceries that create them too. On top of that, with Slimefoot's ability, we can just pay 4 to create one at any time. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to sacrifice those sapperlings to ping and drain out our opponents. Now, Slimefoot's ability is great, but there are other cards in this deck that can do similar things too to help out. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's go on to our first tactic. Tactic number one, a rolling stone. First up, we've got Rampant Growth, which can search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. And then there's Farseek, which can only search for a swamp, but it's also going to put it into play tapped. Next up, there's Diligent Farmhand and Dawn Trader Elk, both of which we can sacrifice to search our library for a basic land card and put into play tapped. Then there's Fertilid, which enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then at any time, we can pay 1 in a green to remove one of those plus 1 plus 1 counters to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Now, Slimefoot's ability only triggers whenever a Sapperling dies, but we've got other cards in this deck that trigger whenever any creature dies. So not only can these cards help ramp us, but they can also help us with that too. Next up is Elvish Rejuvenator, which will get us a land from one of the top 5 cards of our library and put it onto the battlefield tapped. And then there's Grow from the Ashes, which we can either cast for 3 to get 1 basic land into play untapped, or we can kick it to get 2. Next up is Circuitous Root, which will get us 2 basic land cards and or gate cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And then we've got perhaps the biggest source of ramp for this deck, which is Pitiless Plunderer. It says, whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap sacrifice this artifact at one mana of any color to your mana pool. So now those sapperlings that we're sacrificing are also going to help us ramp. And finally, there's Song of Freilis, which is a saga that says, until your next turn, creatures you control gain tap at one mana of any color. So for the first two lore counters for this saga, it's going to allow all of our creatures to tap for mana so that we can cast more and more spells that get us more sapperlings. And then when its third lore counter comes on, it's going to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that we control. Those creatures are going to gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until the end of the turn. Now this can come in handy, but the main thing about this card again is allowing our creatures to tap for mana. So what kinds of cards are we going to cast with that mana? Let's go through some of them now in tactic number two, Spreading Sprouts. First up, we've got Tukatung Thalad and Deathloom Thalad, and when either of them die, they're going to create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Then there's Yavimaya Sapperd, which when it enters the battlefield, we're going to get one of those sapperlings. Next up, we've got a couple of spells that can create quite a few sapperlings on their own. We can either get two sapperlings with sapperling migration, but if we kick it for an additional four, we're going to get four instead. And then with Spore Swarm, we're going to create three sapperlings at instant speed. Sprout Swarm is a card that might seem innocent at first, but it can really get out of hand quickly. It's an instant for 2 mana that's going to put a Sapperling creature token into play. But on top of that, it has Convoke so our creatures can tap to cast it, and then buy back so that we can actually get it back for just 3 mana. So with this deck, we can just keep casting this spell over and over again at instant speed, getting us more and more Sapperlings to help cast it more and more times. Next up, there's Scatter the Siege, which is also an instant with Convoke, and it's going to create 3 Sapperlings for us. Then there's Thelonite Hermit, which we can cast as a morph, and then at any time morph it up for 3 green green. When we do that, we're going to create four green sapperling creature tokens, and all of our sapperling creatures are going to get plus one plus one when it's in play. Next up is Fungal Sprouting, which can be one of our biggest sapperling spells in the deck. It's going to put X11 green sapperling creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And then there's Sapperling Burst, which can create a ton of sapperlings all at once. It's kind of a complex card, so let's go through it. It has Fading 7, so it's going to enter the battlefield with 7 Fading Counters on it, and at the beginning of our upkeep, we have to remove a Fade Counter from it, and if we can't, we sacrifice it. At any time, we can remove a Fade Counter from it, though, to put a Green Sapperling Creature Token onto the battlefield, with its power and toughness being equal to the number of Fade Counters on Sapperling Burst. 
And then when it leaves the battlefield, we have to destroy all tokens put onto the battlefield with it, and they can't be regenerated. So basically, the longer that we wait to remove those fade counters, the less counters we're going to have to remove. And next up is Vertoloth the Ancient, which is going to give all of our sapperlings plus one plus one, and it's got a kicker cost of X. When it enters the battlefield, if we kicked it, we get to put X11 one, one green sapperling creature tokens onto the battlefield. This deck can generate a lot of mana all at once, so we can get a ton of sapperlings from this. And finally, we've got Second Harvest, which is essentially going to double up the number of sapperlings that we have at instant speed. This can be a great way to surprise finish off our opponents if we have a big enough sapperling army built up. Now a lot of these cards are great at helping us get a ton of sapperlings all at once, but there are some other cards that can help us build up that sapperling army over time. So let's go through those cards now in tactic number three, Organically Raised. First up we've got Thalad and Thalad Shell Dweller, both of which pretty much do the exact same thing for us. At the beginning of our upkeep, we get to put a spore counter on them, and then at any time we can remove three spore counters from them to put a sapperling onto the battlefield. But then we have two cards that can help us expedite that process. Spore Sower Thalad has, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on each fungus that you control. So now cards like Thalad and Thalad Shell Dweller are each going to get two counters each turn. And then there's Sporloth Ancient, which has creatures you control have removed two spore counters from this creature, put a green sapling creature token onto the battlefield. So it lowers that requirement of the number of spore counters on our funguses. And now our funguses just need to have two spore counters on them in order to create that sapling. If we have both of these cards in play, things can get out of control very quickly. Next up there's Spore Mound, which is going to create a sapling every single time a land comes onto the battlefield under our control. We've got a couple of lands in this deck like Evolving Wilds that can even trigger this twice. And then there's Golgari Germination, which has whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a sapling creature token. So now whenever a fungus or one of our other creatures dies, we're going to get a sapling for that. And with an Aristocrat style deck like this one, this comes in huge. And finally, we've got some of our best sapling creators in the deck with Verdant Embrace and Verdant Force. Verdant Embrace is an aura that says, Enchanted Creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and has, at the beginning of each upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token into play under your control. And then Verdant Force is a creature that has the exact same ability. Make sure that you note that this says each upkeep so it's not just during your upkeep. So in Commander, if we're playing with 4 players, just one time around the table, we're going to get 4 sapperlings. If these cards stay on the battlefield for too long, our opponents are going to be in big trouble. So you might think that we're done with Sapperling cards, but we're not done quite just yet. It's time to go through some more Sapperling creators in tactic number 4, Homegrown. First up there's Necrogenesis, which will allow us to pay 2 to exile target creature card from a graveyard to create a Sapperling creature token. So not only can this card mess with some graveyard synergies for certain decks, it can also give us a ton of tokens for a very discounted price. Again, with Slimefoot's ability, it costs us 4 mana to just create one token, but with this, we can just pay 2 to do it instead. Speaking of a discounted ability, there's Jade Mage. With Jade Mage in play, we just have to pay 2 and a green to create a Sapperling. Now the difference between 4 and 3 mana might not seem that significant, but it really adds up over the game. Which is why we're also going to be running Heartstone. Heartstone is an artifact that says, Activated abilities of creatures cost 1 less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana an ability costs to activate to less than 1 mana. So with this in play, now Slimefoot's ability only costs us 3 to activate in order to create a Sapperling. And it's even better if we have Jade Mage in play, because it's only going to cost us 2 to create a Sapperling then. Now we do have some other creatures that will benefit from this, but again, the main reason that this card is in the deck is to help us create more and more sapperlings. Now creating sapperlings is great, but in order to get Slimefoot's trigger, they need to die. Let's go through some ways to make sure that happens in tactic number 5, Composting. First up there's Death Spore Thalad, which does have that ability to get spore counters on it and then to remove those spore counters to create sapperlings, but that's not the main reason it's in this deck. The main reason that it's in this deck is that we can use it to sacrifice a sapperling to give target creature minus one minus one until the end of the turn. This is just a free sacrifice element that can help us decimate our opponent's creatures. And then there's Thalid Devourer, which can sacrifice a sapperling to give it plus one plus two until the end of the turn. Thalid Germinator is very similar, but it's going to sacrifice sapperlings to give any target creature plus one plus one until the end of the turn. Next up is Vitaspore Thalid, which can sacrifice sapperlings to give creatures haste until the end of the turn. And finally, there's Whisper Blood Liturgist, which isn't a fungus and can't create any sapperlings on its own. But it can tap to sacrifice two creatures in order to return target creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. So we can just use Whisper to sacrifice some of those sapperlings in order to get a valuable creature back from our graveyard. Now, in order to get to some of these sacrifice effects and some of our other valuable cards, we need to draw cards. Let's go through some great ways to do that in tactic number six, Green Drawings. First up, there's Evolutionary Leap, which lets us pay a green in order to sacrifice a creature to reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature card. We then get to put that card into our hand and the rest on the bottom of our library. So we can just use this to sacrifice one of our sapperlings in order to get a more valuable card. And then there's Shamanic Revelation, which will let us draw a card for each creature that we control, and it has Ferocious. So for each creature that we control with power 4 or greater, we're going to gain 4 life. Now in this deck, we might not gain a lot of life with this card, but we're going to be drawing a ton of cards with it. Next up, there's Death Reap Ritual, which will let us draw a card at the beginning of each end step if a creature died this turn. 
With a lot of saplings out and a sacrifice outlet on the board, we can ensure that we draw a card off of this every single turn. And then there's Smothering Abomination, which has at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Sacrificing a creature at the beginning of our upkeep is no big deal for this deck, and we're going to draw a ton of cards with this in play. Next up is Fecundity, which is an enchantment that says whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller may draw a card. So this will benefit our opponents, but our deck is going to benefit off of this much more. And then we've got some Sacrifice Outlets that are also going to draw some cards. First up is Fungal Plots, which we can pay 1 in a green to exile a creature card from our graveyard to create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. And then at any point, we can sacrifice 2 saplings to gain 2 life and to draw a card. And then there's Thalon Suitsayer, which we can pay 2 to sacrifice a creature to draw a card. Kravion Redeem does this in an even bigger way. It allows us to pay a black to sacrifice X creatures, and then target player draws X cards and gains X life, and then we put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So for just 1 black mana, we can sacrifice off a ton of saplings to draw a lot of cards and to gain a lot of life. Now these are all great ways to help us draw some cards, but they're nowhere near as effective as our golden pick of the deck. The golden pick of the deck is the number one card out of our 99. And the golden pick for this deck is Keen Sense. Keen Sense is an aura that costs a green, and it says, whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. Make sure to note that this card does not say combat damage specifically, it can be damage of any kind. So this card works amazingly with Slimefoot. Remember that whenever a sapling dies, Slimefoot is going to deal 1 damage to each opponent. If we have Keen Sense on Slimefoot, we're going to draw a ton of cards. Because each time a sapling dies and Slimefoot pings each of our opponents, we're going to get 3 separate triggers off of Keen Sense. That means for each one of our saplings that dies, we're going to draw 3 cards. This is an incredible amount of value, especially for just 1 mana. If our opponents don't deal with Keen Sense right away, we're going to get way ahead of them very quickly. And that's why Keen Sense is the golden pig of the deck. And then we've got another card that was very close to being the golden pig of the deck. And that card is Snake Umbra, which pretty much does the exact same thing as Keen Sense, but it also has Totem Armor. So on top of drawing us a ton of cards, it also protects Slimefoot. The only drawback with this card is that it costs us slightly more than Keen Sense does, but again, both are great cards. Now drawing cards is great, but going out and picking the right card that we want is even better. So let's go through some cards that do that in tactic number 7, Search For It. First up there's Demir Houseguard, which we can transmute for 1 black black to search our library for any card that has a converted mana cost of 4 and put into our hand. On top of that, we can even just cast Demir Houseguard and then use it as a sacrifice outlet. There are a ton of crucial cards in this deck that have a converted mana cost of 4 that do a wide variety of things, and being able to search for any of them just for 3 mana can be huge. But perhaps an even more effective way to search for one of those creatures is with Flesh Rider. When we transfigure Flesh Rather for just one black black, we can sacrifice it to search our library for a creature card with the same converted mana cost and put it straight onto the battlefield. So again, this ability helps us get the right creature for the right situation straight onto the battlefield. But what are some of those creatures that we're going to be searching for? Some of them are going to be in our next tactic, tactic number 8, Be Like Slime. Again, we're going to be running some creatures that have some Slimefoot-like effects. First up, we've got Blood Artist and Falcon Rath Noble, both of which pretty much do the exact same thing. They have whenever they or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and we gain one life. So again, when we're sacrificing a ton of those sapperlings, we can just use these cards to help drain out our opponents. And then we've got Zulaport Cutthroat and Poison Tip Archer, both of which can be even more effective. Zulaport Cutthroat has whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life, and we gain one life. So unlike Blood Artist and Falconrath Noble, this only happens whenever our creatures die, but it does drain all of our opponents. And then Poison Tip Archer has whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. So we don't gain any life from this card, but it does trigger whenever any creature dies but it. Next up there's Epicure of Blood, which has whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Again, Slimefoot's ability allows us to gain life every single time one of our saplings dies. So with Epicure of Blood in play alongside Slimefoot, our opponents are basically going to lose 2 life every single time one of our saplings dies. And then there's Nekote, which has a similar effect. It's an equipment that has whenever equipped creature deals damage to a player, that player loses one life. So again, this is just another great way for us to double up Slimefoot's effect. And finally, there's Grafted Exoskeleton, which is an equipment that will give equipped creature plus 2 plus 2 an infect. By giving Slimefoot infect, it only has to deal 10 damage to each of our opponents in order to kill them. With a Sapperling army in play and a Sacrifice Outlet, this is an easy way for us to finish off all of our opponents at once. So we've talked about taking out our opponents, but what about making sure that our pieces stay alive? Let's go through some cards that help us now in Tactic number 9, Safe and Slimed. First up there's Savage Salad, which can create saplings with spore counters, but the main reason that we have it in this deck is that we can sacrifice a sapling with it in order to regenerate target fungus. With this in play, we can keep our key funguses alive, including Slimefoot. And then we've got Rap and Vigor, which will regenerate each creature that we control. This can come in handy to save our entire board, because again, we want to make sure that we choose when our saplings die, and not our opponents. And finally, there's Golgari Charm, which can also regenerate each creature that we control. Or we can choose one of its other two modes. We can give all creatures minus one, minus one until the end of the turn, or we can destroy target enchantment. It's a great card with a great amount of flexibility that can really save us in a pinch. 
As always with the deck, it's good for us to have some interaction too in order to deal with some of the things that our opponents are doing. So let's go through some cards that help us do that in tactic number 10, Running Interference. First up, there's Caustic Caterpillar, which we can pay one into green to sacrifice to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Again, sacrificing is actually a good thing for this deck because it's going to trigger a lot of our abilities. And then we've got Null Maid Shepherd, which can destroy a ton of artifacts and enchantments. It has tap four and tap creatures you control, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Again, this deck focuses on getting a ton of sapperlings out into play, and we can use those sapperlings to destroy artifacts and enchantments with Null Maid Shepherd in play. And finally, there's Butcher of Malakir, which has whenever it or another creature we control dies, each opponent has to sacrifice a creature. With this in play, it's very easy for us to decimate our opponent's armies just by sacrificing off some sapperlings. This deck is a ton of fun and can be surprisingly powerful with the right cards in play. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. First up, there's Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice the Search our Library for a basic land to put into play tapped. Then there's Jun Panorama, which we can tap for a colorless, or we can pay one to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a swamp or a forest and put into play tapped. Next up is Warp Landscape and Terminal Moraine, both of which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. And then there's Golgari Guildgate, Foul Orchard, and Jungle Hollow, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either black or green. And on top of that, Jungle Hollow will gain us a life when it comes into play. Next up is Golgari Rot Farm, which will enter the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield with the returning lane, we control back to our hand. It does have the upside, though, of tapping for both of our colors. And then we're running Vivid Grove and Vivid Marsh, both of which enter the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on them. Vivid Grove taps for a green, and Vivid Marsh taps for a black, but we can also tap them to remove a charge counter from them to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. And finally, we're going to be running 25 lands, 18 of those will be a forest, and 7 will be swamps. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Slimefoot EDH rec deck is going to set you back $136.66, so let's see how we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in just under budget at $24.99. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned in focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, there's Psychotrope Thalad, which comes in at $4.95. Psychotrope Thalad is a 1-1 fungus that costs 2 and a green. It has, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a Spore Counter on Psychotrope Thalad. Remove 3 Spore Counters from Psychotrope Thalad to put a 1-1 green Sapperling Creature Token into play. And then you can pay 1 to sacrifice a Sapperling to draw a card. So not only can this be a great sacrifice outlet for us, it can also be a huge draw engine for this deck. And then there's Utopia Mycon, which comes in at $4.77. It's a 0-2 fungus for a green that has, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on it. Remove three spore counters from it to put a 1-1 green sapperling creature token into play. And then at any time, you can sacrifice a sapperling to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So again, this is a fantastic sacrifice outlet that actually helps ramp us. Speaking of which, next up we've got Ashnod's Altar, which comes in at $4.95. Ashnod's Altar is an artifact that costs three that says, sacrifice a creature to add two colorless to your mana pool. So with this, we can sacrifice those saplings that we're creating with Slimefoot's ability to help us create more and more saplings with it. And then we've got Tendershoot Dryad, which comes in at $3.21. Tendershoot Dryad is a 2-2 Dryad that costs 4 and a green. It has Ascend, and at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 green sapling creature token. Saplings you control get plus 2, plus 2, as long as you have the City's Blessing. With this deck, it is very easy for us to get the City's Blessing, so we can pump up those saplings, and we're going to get more and more saplings each turn with this in play. Next up is Mycoloth, which comes in at $2.40. Mycoloth is a 4-4 fungus that costs 3 green green. It has Devour too, so when it enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice any number of creatures, and then this creature enters the battlefield with twice that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 green sapling creature token for each plus 1 plus 1 counter on Mycoloth. So we can use Mycoloth not only to sacrifice a ton of sapperlings, but we can also use it to create a ton of sapperlings for us. And finally, we've got Illusionist Bracers, which comes in at $3.50. It's an equipment that costs 2, and it costs 3 to equip. It says whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability, you may choose new targets for that copy. With this attached to slime foot, now whenever we pay four to create one sapperling, we're gonna get an extra one too. This can even go infinite if we have something like Ashton's Altar in play. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just wanna hear about what you think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you use that deck list link in the description below. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you.
I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel, and then check out some of our playlists on budget commander decks, commander excluded decks, and break the bank episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.